praise the Lord tonight. Are we ready? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, Lord. It's always good to be in the house of the Lord. Yes, it is. It's always good to come and praise his name. It's always good to think about just how good God has been to you throughout the day. One thing that uh, has, has really been on my heart, and in, in Psalms 22, uh, and I'm going to read a couple of verses, uh, 2 and 3. It says, Oh my God, I cry in the daytime, but you answer not, but not I am by, by night I am not silent or find no rest. And a lot of times when you look at that verse, when it starts off, it starts with, my God, my God, first verse, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me and from the words of my groaning? And sometimes when you look at David, he went, he had ups and downs. But you know what? When you start crying out to God and you feel like, man, my life is not going anywhere, just start that conversation. Because you know what? It seems like in the middle of it, God turns it around. Mm -hmm. Because you start realizing, wait, what am I saying? What am I saying? Because I serve the creator. Uh -huh. and, and look how things turned around quick by verse 3. says, but you are holy. O oh, you who dwell in the holy place where the praises of Israel are offered. And some of those translations say, the, the New Heart English Bible, but you are holy, you who inhabit the praises of Israel. You inhabit, and I look up, inhabit means to live in a place. To have a home, a place to be present in something. God is present in us. Amen. You know, and, and we got to always remember that. And always remember that we, we look at Jesus said, you know, I'm standing at the door and I'm, and I'm knocking. You know, if you, if you, if you let me in, I want to come in and, I, and I, I want to dine with you. It's almost like come in and have a meal with you. You get that? He wants to be a friend to you. That's what I love about Jesus so much. He says in uh, Revelation 3.20, look, one, it's the New Eleven translation says, look, I, if, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we'll share a meal together as friends. One of the translations said, I think that's awesome. He shared together as friends. Oh, like that song says, what a friend we have in Jesus. You know, all our grits, we can bring everything to God. That's what I love so much about serving God. Is that, you know, as Christians, it doesn't make us perfect. We, we make mistakes. We do things, think the wrong things. But you know what? God is always there. You know, the, the thing I love about God is that, man, you know what? He still bears with us. You know, well, some people, you make a mistake once with them, you're a goner. You're a goner, you know? But with God, he says, you know what? You're my child. I have you engraved on the palm of my hands. Now think about that. Every time he says, he looks and sees you. You know, there was a song we used to sing back in the 80s. You know, when he was on the cross, I was on his mind. I love that song when he used to sing that. That is such a powerful. When I, He was already thinking about, before the foundation of the world, <clears throat> before I was in my mom's belly, God knew. And he's weaving your personality. I love that. I love the fact that God had a plan for your life. A lot of times in the, in the, in the, in, uh, I'm teaching in the classroom. And a lot of times I, I, I like to say we're all part of the human race. We're all part of it. We're still brothers and sisters. We may not agree together. But we all started from the same place. And you know what? The thing about it, God loves each and every one of us. He loves us all. And when, and I get, I just, especially the last year, it seemed like I've been calling everybody brother, you know? Hey, brother, you know what? Because <clears throat> when you when you look at people, and when we're driving down the road, one of the things you look at, don't look at them as just somebody else in the car beside you, or somebody walking down. They belong to somebody. You did not get on this earth by yourself, right? You had to be born, you had to get here. So you're all connected. There had to be a mom, it had to be a dad. There, you know, you got uncles, aunts, somewhere. We're all connected. And what better to be connected in Jesus Christ? 
that, you know what, there's a plan. Do you ever wonder why you are alive at this time in your life? Do you ever wonder why you were born, why we all came together at this point in your life? Because God has a plan. He has a plan for everybody's life. And the best thing you can do is just surrender to God's plan in your life and say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, whatever you want me to do. Because that's where the power comes from when you decided, you know what, I have decided. I love those old songs they used to sing because it was a decision that you had to make. I have decided to follow Jesus. You know, and so I am not turning back. I love that. I love them old saints that just said, you know, I'm going to hang in there. You know, I might not have this. I might not have that. But one thing I do, and I have the love of Jesus Christ. I tell you what, that, I mean, your cupboards might be, might be empty, but I still got Jesus Christ. You know, my family may not be doing the things I want them, but I still have Jesus Christ. And you know what I can do? I can pray to the Creator. Because I always believe the prayers, because, I, I mean, I, I'm looking at this from a realistic standpoint. If you pray for something, Jesus said, you got to believe. you got to believe you're going to get it. You know, really believe in all your heart. Now, I'm telling you, some of them prayers may take years to answer, but I still believe them. My aunt, and I know I shared this before, my aunt used to pray. She used to pray for her grandson for years. I mean, every time I'd call her up or go visit her, come down there, she said, pray for my grandson. Pray for my grandson. Pray every time. It, it wasn't... Even what was what was the thing that got to me? Uh, she fell and broke her hip, and she was in the hospital. And it was evident they wasn't going to fix her hip. She was up in the eighties, and and it was toward the end of her life. And I called her up to tell her I appreciate all the prayers that you had ushered up for me. And you know what she said on the phone? Pray for my grandson. She still said, it. and that was the last thing I remember hearing. She still prayed. And you know what happened? The grandson. And that was years, see? That's how God worked. The grandson, yes, that deserved the clap when anybody's life turned around. But he turned around, he moved down to Arizona, got right with the Lord, and he's praising the Lord now. And that was years. We're, we're about the same age, but it took years. But she knew better. She was an old saint. She knew better not to give up. Uh -huh. See, I know you can tell if somebody's a real Christian or not. I was up there preaching a revival down there one year, and it was in the summer, and it was terrible hot. It, it was, it was, you know, 6.30, quarter to 7 at night, and it was 95, 96 degrees out there. Yeah. And she lived for probably about six or seven blocks from the church, and at that time, she was well in their 70s, and you know what she was doing? She was walking to church. Yeah. She was walking to church. So we pulled up beside her and went that way, said, would you like a ride? She said, no, I can make it. I can make it. You know, and I thought, well, that was so powerful. Because, you know, I, I mean, she just knew that that's where she needed to be at that time in her life in the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And for all the years that I'd known her, she was a godly woman. You know, my, my cousin was in the, in the hospital one night, and it was a really horrible night, snow, sleet, and everything. And he, he was praying in the hospital that somebody would just come and visit him that night. And he thought there's nobody. He can look out the window, you know, and, and see the weather. And he thought nobody come. But Lord, send somebody to just pray with me. And guess who came? My aunt. Mm. <laughs> she came. So I know that's real. And tonight as we come and, and, we, and, and we're going to worship God, realize that he inhabits. He's with us. Whether you have a thousand people in church, you have a few. It doesn't matter. Because when you got Jesus there, you still got church. Because he said, well, there's two or three touching our green, he'd be in the midst. That's right. I bet church is just me and Jesus that's sitting there. We're going to have church. Oh. I, I remember one time when I <clears throat> first got saved, we went to a church, and it was just, it was, it's supposed to be youth night. It was a Friday night, and it was me and the deacon. That's oh. who it was. I'll tell you, that was the quickest church service I ever seen. I think it lasted about 20 minutes, but that's all right. That's all right. We were still there, and Jesus was there. You know, and we still praise God. That's what it's about. Yeah. Let's realize tonight, that's what we're going to get down with God and say, you know what? We're lifting you up tonight. Oh. We're praising you tonight because you have come in with us. You live in us. And God, we still believe you. Yeah. We believe you. You know, we believe everything you said. One thing about Jesus is that when he says, I love you, you know, when we, when we think about that verse, 
And, and, and Jeremiah, I love you with an everlasting love that God loves to set much juice. I always get a picture. This is how I get the picture of Jesus. It's like he wants to just hold us and tell us. You know, he rejoices over us with singing. You know, it's how much you love your kids. Think about how much you love your kids. You want to hold them. You know, it's really funny when the kids were little. You, you want to hold them so much. <laughs> you know, you just want to hold them. But they got to learn to walk. And they got to learn to do everything. But you can't wait to hold them. I remember my mom, God bless her. She, she's been gone for quite a few years now. But I, I remember if I haven't seen her for a while. And I, I come up and she was putting clothes on the clothesline. And I drove up and I had a van. And just since I got a van. And, and mom was up in years. Here she come. She saw me getting out of the van. She came running at me. She came running at me with her arms like this. And I thought, hallelujah. Hallelujah. She came wide open. I mean, you can fall anything, but she said, my son, you know. And I tell you what, that's the way God greets you. God loves you that much. Never, ever forget that. And sometimes I think that's why we get off and we get to worry and all this stuff, because we forget that. Don't ever forget that God loves you. That God cares for you. We, you know, one one time, uh, sometimes when you have something happen at home, you break something, and it had recently, and sometimes you feel so bad. But you know, I was thinking the other night, you know, it's just like God was telling me, you know, wherever your life is, I still love you. Yeah. If it's a fracture, if it's a mess, or if things are not going, you know what? I still love you. Even if you walk away, I still love you. Even if you make your bed in hell, I still love you. Uh -huh. And I always say this. Y'all heard me say it before. If you make your bed in hell, you plan on coming back. That's what I'm thinking, you know. But even if you do that, God still loves you. Can you imagine? Think about the disciples. That always gets me still. The saddest scripture in the Bible is the disciples forsook them and fled. Right. That has to be the right. absolute right. saddest scripture. Fled doesn't mean they walked away from them. They ran away from them. But you know what Jesus doesn't do is when he sees them again, he doesn't say, you know, you guys, I really don't appreciate you guys deserting me in a time like that. Uh -huh. He doesn't say that right. because God's bigger than that. God's not a petty God. Some people are petty over stuff. God's not a petty God. You know what he tells them? I love you. And when Peter denied him, I love that. Peter's one that said, I'll stick with you no matter what. I'll go to jail. I'll do all the stuff. You know, you're going you're gonna to deny me three times. What are you talking about? But you know what? Jesus didn't bring it up to him. When he got resurrected and he told everybody, he said, tell you what, tell you what, you make sure you tell Peter that I've risen. Uh, you make sure, and Peter, make sure Peter knows that. And then when they meet, you know, do you love me? Do you love me? He doesn't throw it up at Peter. Mm. You know, and, and that day when, when, the, when the, the cock grew, the Bible says Peter wept bitterly. You know, he remembered what he said. Can you imagine that with Peter? Because he's the one that was so bold. And then, and then, oh, I won't deny you. And then so, hey, you sound like him. No, no, wait, wait, wait. We got a mistake. I don't even know him. Well, he's been with him for three and a half years. How can you say that? Right. I don't even know him. But when they meet again, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? Look at Peter's life after the resurrection. Look at Peter's life when he got filled with the Holy Ghost. Buddy, we're going all the way now. We got the power. We're going all the way. We're not going to deny you anymore. Uh, Look at Peter's life. Look at the disciples' life. They they understood something. They understood that, okay, I may have messed up. You know, I may have backslid, but you know what? I'm not backsliding no more. I'm going front. I'm going to stay, keep my train on the rail because we're going to finish well. You know, you might always start well, and in the middle, you might be going uphill, but you know what? We're going to finish well, and we're going to finish well because we serve Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. That's why. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're going to open up testing. James, yes. That's right.
Hallelujah. James. That's excellent. Yeah, that is exactly what we are supposed to do is encourage one another. Because yeah. we never know necessarily what people are going through. We don't. But, you know, if you say, hey, brother, I'm going to be praying for you, you know, and, and hey, and a lot of times, tell you, if you can sit down with somebody for five minutes, you can find out a lot about them, you know, a lot what's going on. If somebody looks a little depressed or somebody off to the side and, hey, what's going on, brother? I'm not trying to pry, but I tell you what, I'm with you. I'm going to lock arms with you. That is powerful. You know, because like I had a, had a friend, I was going through some things one, one year, and, and I had some friends that drove three and a half hours, and the only reason they drove that three and a half hours one way was to see me, see how I was doing. You don't think that sticks in your mind? <clears throat> that they took their time, their gas to come up? That's why when God lays somebody on your heart to pray for, mm. please do it. Don't just say, you know, oh, no, God, you know. Because you know, one thing about it, you know it's not Satan because he don't care about nobody. Right. Why is he going to tell you to go pray? Why don't you go pray for it? He don't care. Right. He'd rather, oh, just leave him alone. I tell you what, a lot of times, you know, I tell you what, your visit can make all the difference in that person's life. That's right. <clears throat> Just that one visit, that one knock on the door can make all the difference. I remember years ago, we had a, a meeting down at the uh, downtown. It was a, a kind of a, 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 a gathering of different churches. And in, at, the end, at the end of it, they, it was a bunch of churches, and they wanted you to find somebody to pray with at the very end of it. And it was amazing. It didn't take very long to see how God guided you. You know, people went over here, people went over there, and, and I saw this lady, and she was kind of standing over there, and it's amazing. Went up and just prayed for her, and then it's like, once I said I'm willing to pray, all this stuff just poured out of her. It just poured out of her, about her life, about things were going. And then we prayed, and you could see that light come back in her eyes. And you know what? People will gravitate to somebody that cares for them. They will gravitate to it. You know, that's what Jesus, I love about Jesus the most. Jesus dealt with everybody, rich, poor, prostitutes, whoever it was. You know what? And and because he realized everybody has a need. You know, we look at somebody that's worth a hundred million dollars and we say, what they could possibly want. You know, they don't have to be checking a check account, you know, like some people do. You don't go to the ATMs and just hope and pray there's some money in the other end. You know, I, it's, been, it's been there. But you know, there, there's things. You don't know what their need. They might have an issue in their family. Right. You know, man, I wish my daughter would call me. I haven't heard from her for years. All the money in the world is not bringing that daughter back, you know? And I'll tell you what, some people would give up. I, I give up their money for that. I asked my daughter one time, and we, we was talking about I asked her one time. I said, you know what? If you had a million dollars on the table, you would get a million dollars tax free. But the only stipulation, you can never see your kids again. You got a million dollars, and you can never see your kids again. You know what she said? Daddy, that's easy. They can keep their money. Okay? Because she understood what was most important. It's as relationships. God understands that. Just the thing, Jesus died for you. Whether you receive him or not, he still is going to die for you. If nobody would. You know, and think about that. He died for you so you can be reconciled back to the Father. He was willing to die. And how did Jesus die? He died like this with his arms wide open. I love that. That's how he died. It's like, come here. I am here. I am the sacrifice for you. And surely, if he died for us, we can live for him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Someone else. Yes, brother. Uh, I stopped, we stopped in and uh, saw Myron uh, this afternoon. Oh, good. And good. Uh, he's getting along better. Good. And, uh, and so it seemed about a week or so, uh, you know, I might get back and see those kids and get back to work and so forth. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I, 
I'm glad Myron and Myron and Red doing doing better. That that's that's awesome, and appreciate you visiting. I mean, it, it means so much when you're shut shut in or you can't, you know, you, you can't get out like you used to and have somebody come. That I tell you, prayer is so powerful when you come. People crave that; they really do. And when you take the time out of your schedule to go over and pray for somebody, I tell you what, that can change a life. Mm -hmm. That can change a life because I tell you what, you're taking your time, and Jesus said, where it's two or three touch and agreeing, you're in the midst. Uh -huh. And so Jesus is right there with you. Mm -hmm. That is so powerful. Hallelujah. Someone else. Yes. Uh, I just got a report from the city on the way out of the house that my grandson Kate is in Kansas, fell off the swing and broke both of his ribs. Oh. Hallelujah. Caden? Caden, yeah. Caden. Okay. Wow. We'll definitely do that. Yes. Okay. All right. Anybody else? Yes. Yep. Uh, <coughs> some people here know uh, Susan Thompson. Uh, she was part of Metro and stuff like that. Her and her uh, worship team will be here Sunday. So we'll Hallelujah. Pray for them. Um, love the Lord. Love their ministry. Um, even her daughter's playing piano now and stuff like that. So. I'll be there Saturday afternoon at 4 o'clock and rehearse and then back Sunday morning at 9 and rehearse some more. But um, they, God's got a message on their heart and stuff. So just pray for them to uh, just uh, let God's kingdom flow through them. So pray for them between now and then. Hallelujah. And share for us. Well, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I don't know. It just seemed like, you know, gentlemen, ladies, just that, you know, as, as I get older in the Lord, you just love them more, you know. Like song, sweeter he grow. I mean, it's just like God gets sweeter and sweeter in your life mm -hmm. because you realize where would you be without God? Yep. Where would you be? My mom used to say that all the time. What do people do without the Lord? You know, and she also used to say the Bible ain't wrong. She'd always say that the Bible ain't wrong. You know, and she would pray about everything. Mom would. Mm -hmm. She would pray about everything. Uh -huh. You know, if I if we should go or not go or not do something, and when the kids. We'd call there and ask mom's advice and said, just pray, pray. Why don't you pray about it? And I'll, and I'll call Aunt Louise, okay? Yeah. And we'll pray. And they would pray every morning about something, about 5 o'clock in the morning. They'd get on the phone, or if I had a request, they would pray. And they would grab hold of God, you know, and, and that's what it's about. It's about believing God because I just feel the cry of Jesus' heart when he walked to earth, the thing about it, he just, I just wish they would believe me more. I wish they would just believe me. That's why he was always, when somebody had faith, he was like, wow, <laughs> we got a person that really believes. You know, and that's what he wants from us, to, to realize that we need to lift him up more. You know, because you got the creator on your side. You can't lose. Yeah. How can you lose when you got the whole creator just think about it. He spoke the world in existence. If he spoke the world in existence, which we believe that, what makes us think he can't take care of our problems? Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, sometimes we think, well, get, you know, God, I don't have this or that. You have me. <laughs> That's what you have. Lock arms with me, and we can get through this. Hallelujah. Lord, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, stand up and pray, please. Let's go. If y'all would stand up for prayer. I appreciate it. Oh, Father God, tonight, thank you for inhabiting our praises. Thank you for willing to come in and dine with us. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. You love us with an everlasting love. Thank you for never giving up on us. Just like the prodigal son that was walking down the road, the father ran toward him. It's like you running toward us, put your arms out and say, I love you. You're home, you're home, you're home. Yes, Lord. Father God, let us never forget that it's all about you, yes, our wonderful savior and counselor. It's all about in the beginning God. That's what it's about. That you promise you never leave us or forsake us. 
Father God, you are so good to us. Let us never forget what you've done for us in the past. Let us never forget what you're doing now. And let us never forget what you will do in the future. God, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what we're going to do tonight, I shall yet praise him. We're going to praise you because you are so worthy of praise. Lord, we thank you for Myron's getting better. Red Robin, we thank you for that. Love for him and their relationship. We thank you for the fact that they was able to go visit and spend that time. Father God, we thank you for that, that Caden that broke the wrist. Lord, we just ask you for total healing in that situation so hard. Lord, to Susan Thompson that's going to be coming and sharing. Lord, we thank you that, Lord, they want to come and praise and worship and fellowship because it's all about you, God. We thank you for James willing to share. Lord, we thank you for our church. Lord, we ask you to be with the pastor and his wife, Lord, that you would continue to bless them and use them in a mighty way. Thank you for everybody in this church house, the ones that couldn't be here tonight. We praise you because, God, you are so worthy. You are worthy to be praised. Oh, come, let us adore him. Because you are worthy. I just keep seeing that word. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the land. And Father God, as tonight as we go further into worship, let your glory rain down on us, in us, and through us. Because we belong to you. And we thank you in your wonderful holy name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and we're going to speak the word. Please make sure your phones are off. Thank you. Let's speak the word. Will you not revive us again that your people may rejoice in you? Hallelujah. I am a believer. These signs do follow me. In the name of Jesus, I cast out demons, I speak in new tongues, I lay hands on the sick, and they do recover. <laughs> Hallelujah. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Therefore, I forbid any sickness or disease to come upon this body. Every disease, germ, and every virus that touches this body dies instantly in the name of Jesus. Every organ, every tissue of this body function to the perfection to which God created it to function. And I forbid any malfunction in this body in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of my understanding being enlightened. And I am not conformed to this world, but I am transformed by the renewing of my mind. My mind is renewed by the word of God. Hallelujah. The Lord rebukes their vow for my sake, and no weapon that is formed against my finances will prosper. All obstacles and hindrances to my financial prosperity are now dissolved. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Hallelujah. The word of God is powerful. Uh, Brother Ron, would you come up and take the offering for us tonight, please? Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank the Lord tonight. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Take those. Just praise God. Just praise God. He is so worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you tonight, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let your word go forth tonight. Lord, it won't return void. You have something for all of us tonight. Lord, we want to thank you and praise you. The victory comes in knowing you. Lord, we want to thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, we lift you up tonight. We lift your holy name. Your name is above every name. Your name is above hurt, frustration, cancer, any illness. Your name is above every name. And we want to praise you tonight because you are so worthy. Oh, hallelujah, that word just keeps coming. Worthy, worthy, worthy is a lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. We want to thank you tonight for being so good to us, Lord. Without you, we'd be nowhere. Without God, without God, where would we be? For with God, all things are possible. Let us never forget that. Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, our Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you've done for us. Oh, Lord, tonight, as we continue to lift you up in word, we want to give you the praise. We want to give you the glory. Let our hearts change forever. Thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. I want to thank you for Brother Mike and Brother James. And, and Lord, we thank you for all you being here tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your goodness. I, You know, um, whenever you have an opportunity to share, uh, one of the, an old preacher once told me, he said, always share what's big in your heart. That's what he always told me, share what's big. And what's big is God. What's big is he is worthy. And tonight we're going to go, I'd like to go to Psalms 147. Psalms 147. I have a lot of different apps on my phone, and every morning I, I got little scriptures that come up every morning. Every morning. And I can go through there, I have the Bible hub on my phone. I love it because it focuses me on God every morning. And Psalms 147 I love that. I, I just, oh, man. Uh, let's start in Psalms 147. I love it when the scriptures start. Praise the Lord, for it is good to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious and lovely. Praise is becoming and appropriate. The Lord is building up Jerusalem. He is gathering together the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds, curing their pains and their sorrows. Hallelujah. He determines and he counts the number of stars. He calls them all by their names. Hallelujah. Great is our Lord of great power. His understanding is inexhaustible and boundless. Now, folks, let's just think about that for a minute. Think about when the psalm starts out, praise the Lord. How powerful is that? To take time and praise the Lord. He is worthy. God is so worthy. And you know, when we think about worthy, what I always like about worthy means, worthy, what it means is, means good and deserving respect, praise or attention, having worth. God is worth it. That's why we can say he's worthy. Synonyms, he's blameless, admirable, desirable, dependable. Man, I kept looking all that up and I said, hallelujah. Because okay? dependable, he's excellent, he's deserving, he's trustworthy, he's praiseworthy, he's true, he's upright. Let's praise God today. 
praise him. You know, the, the, the songs, I love any song, and, and Christian songs says, I have decided, because it's a conscious effort in your side. God's going to do his side. These old saints, you said, it, 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 if, if you make one step, God makes two. They always just tell us that. You know, if you go, we was talking about that. The miss and I was just talking, you know, like, like if, if, if you want to work at a certain place and you go out in front of the place and said, Lord, I would really like to work there. I would really, I think that looks like a good place and, and the people seem happy when they come out of there. I would like to work. Not a problem in one sense, right? But you got to do your part. You can sit in that parking lot for the next five years. What's the chance of somebody coming out? They might run you off because you've been sitting out for all that long. But what's the chance of them coming out? Do you want to work here? I mean, what's really the chances of that, right? You have to do your part. I'm going to go in there, ask them for a job, ask them for an application, and start the process, and then God can do the rest. I've seen God open the doors. But you know what? We have to will to go to the door. You know, we have to be willing. You know, people say, oh, you know, I'd like to be a, a, a powerful saint. I'd like to be a prayer warrior. I'd like to be able to pray for people. Start in your home. Just start. You know, I, you know, I, I can never pray. Some of them, oh, think they can pray an hour. Okay, let's start with five minutes. Let's start there. Let's get down on our knees and start there. And, you know, I tell you what, the, the saints that pray, they've been praying a long time. And you know what? The best prayers I ever heard sometimes from little kids you know sometimes <clears throat> it's just simple you know just simple things I, I love that bedtime prayer because that's where a lot of them kids get that because yeah. you ask them you pray over them and stuff and then they ask them what do you want to pray for and they always come up with something now to us we thought well why do you want to pray for that that's coming out of their little heart you know we took your nephews and stuff and and needs you know what they say I want to pray for my mom. Don't think God hears that prayer? Yeah, he does. Sometimes we, we think that sometimes we got to have these big formal prayers, but sometimes it's just those easy prayers and just telling God how you really feel. God's a big God. You're not going to irritate him. Sometimes we're just unhappy with the way things are going. That'd be honest. I, I remember I was down in Kansas City, and I, and I, I was loading at this place that made uh, uh, little heaters and stuff. Well, this one driver we got to talking and he and and he was a christian and and he and we got to talk we was there for two or three hours and and he said would you mind praying for my wife I said, hey no problem no problem i said what's wrong he said well we 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 just had two kids a boy and a girl and our son was prepared to go serve as a missionary that's all he wanted to do. He, he loved the visits the missionaries came, and he wanted to do it, but he got killed in a car wreck. And my wife, she just can't understand that. Could not understand that. I said, wow, that, that's really, that'd be hard, you know? He was a good kid, never got in trouble. That's all he wanted from the time he was little. I said, I know, I, I understand. That's a hard place. And then he said, well, we're not, I'm not done yet. Our daughter... Wanted to go to the missionary field too. She was spending the last weekend with her friends before she left. Somebody hit her in the parking lot. The small killed her. Now, my wife is so bitter right now. Well, I'm not going to get on his wife and say, well, she shouldn't feel like that. Those are going to be natural feelings. But you know what? What we have to do is pray for them even when those times are difficult to realize, we might not understand it, but God's still in it. See, when we look at Job's life, the one thing that always fascinated me about Job is when you start the book of Job, you know, they tell about how he's blessed and all that, and then the sons of God came and Satan came. Well, there's one person missing in a conversation, and that was Job. No, nobody asked him if he wanted any of this stuff that's going on, but I thought it was so commendable when God says, you know what, you know, you know, have you considered my servant Job? Well, the reason, reason he's serving you now is because you blessed him. That's why you blessed him and he got kids and he's got cattle and all this. You know, that's why he's serving you. But I tell you what, if you take it all away from him, he'll curse you. Well, go ahead. We'll see. Go ahead. And what happened? One thing after another, right? Job lost it all. 
You know, you lost your cattle and all this, and he lost his kids. He lost all of them. But you know, you look in that scripture, and I want to turn there. Let's go to Job. One thing I think that it's such a powerful. Let's go to Job, Job chapter one. I want to look at this. I love I love Job's reaction. Let's go to Job chapter one. Okay. And and you and you see all this. It's a long chapter. You see how he's been blessed and 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 in uh, verse. Um, go back to verse seven, six and seven. Okay. Because we know that in the preceding verses we go back. That, that Job was always praying for his kids, you know, because he thought they might have done, done something. It's Job chapter 1. But if we look in, in verse 5, let's start in verse 5 of Job chapter 1. Okay? Let's back up 4. Now, he, he said, um, in verse 4, it says, His sons used to go and feast in the house each on his day, birthday in turn, and they invited the three sisters to eat and drink with them. And when the days of their feasting were over, Job sent for them to purify and hollow them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. But Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed and disowned God in their hearts. Thus did Job at all such times. You, you have a praying man here, don't you? He's praying for his kids. Maybe something, when they was having party, they might have said something that wasn't appropriate. But you know what? I'm going to intercede for him. So you got a man that's been blessed. We look above that and you see all the sheep and everything. He's been blessed with these kids, but he offered up his sacrifice for his kids. So you got a godly man, godly man, okay? And, and now let's look down here in verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons, the angel of God, came to present themselves to the Lord, and Satan, the adversary and accuser, also came among them. It never fails. You get it. You get it. Godly people around, somebody likes to come and stirs up trouble sometime, and Satan come. And the Lord said, verse 7, said to Satan, from where did you come? Then Satan answered, Lord, from going to and fro in the earth, from walking up and down on it. And the Lord said to Satan, have you considered, I love this. The Lord's talking about Job here. Have you considered my servant Job? Job serving me. That there is none like him on the earth, that there's none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who is reverently fears God, abstains from and shuns evil because it is wrong. And then it says, then Satan answered the Lord, does God, Job, Job reverently fear God for nothing? You know, the reason he's blessing you, like I said, have you not put a hedge about him and his house and all that he has on every side? You have conferred him a prosperity and happiness upon him. The works of his hand and possession have increased in the land. That's why he's serving you, because you blessed him so much. But put forth your hand now and touch all he has, and he will curse you to your face. But you know what? And, and you know, the Lord is just so wise. I just love it. And the Lord said to Satan, the adversary and accuser, Behold, all that he has in your power only upon the man himself, Put not forth your hand. So Satan went from the presence of the Lord. And then, as you go down through these verses, and just some of them, all these things start happening. There's one person missing from this picture, right? And that's Job. He doesn't know what's going on. He didn't get invited to this conversation. And sometimes we may not know what's going on. But you know what? There's a lot goes on in the heavenlies. And we don't, that's why we got to pray, right? We got to keep praying. And there was a day when Job's sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house on his birthday. And then there came a messenger, Job, and said, The oxen were plowing and the donkeys feeding beside them, and Sabaean swooped down upon them, as verse 15, and took away the animals. Indeed, they have slain their servants with the edge of the sword, and I have alone escaped to tell you. Seemed like there's always somebody willing to tell bad news. That seemed like there's always one. While he was yet speaking, can you imagine all this stuff is happening? Yet there's a lot speaking. There came also another and said, The fire of God lightning has fallen from the heavens and has burned up the sheep, and the servants consumed them, and, and I alone have escaped to tell you. So this starts going on, and this other person comes in, and then while he's speaking, then another comes in. Verse eight, 17, while he's yet speaking, there also 
There came also another and said, The Chaldeans divided into three bands and made raid upon the camels, have taken away, yes, and have slain the servants with the sword, and I have alone escaped to tell. So then, that's going on, and while he's yet speaking, here comes another one. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great whirlwind from the desert and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young people, and they are dead. And, and, and I alone have escaped to tell you. So you see this. I mean, it's animals, servants, all this, and now the kids. You know, I mean, tell you, one after another. Some days it seems like you have bad news one upon another. But look at Job's response. This is when you know you have a godly person here. This is when you know it. Then Job arose, okay, verse 20, and rent his robe, shaved his head, and he fell down upon the ground and he worshiped. That's real, folks. That's what they used to say years ago when the rubber meets the road. That's real. That is real Christian right there. Now, people can fake how they are, but you can tell how they really are when things start going bad. You can tell how they are. He worshiped. Don't you get, get a picture of that? He worshiped. He didn't say, God, and, 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 and just cry, said, say, God, why are you doing this to me? Now, I've heard that. Now, he goes through the whole book of Job. He goes through a lot of transition, let me tell you. He asks a lot of questions. But right here, I think this is so powerful. This has helped me get through a lot of things, and I hope it helps you. And he fell down upon the ground, and he worshiped, and he said, Naked, without possession, came out into this world from my mother's womb, and naked, without possession, shall I depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed, praise, and magnify, and worship be the name of the Lord. How powerful is that, folks? That's real. In all this, Job sinned, not nor charged God foolishly. I mean, that really got me there. That really got me his response when things don't go well. When things are not going the way you don't think. I, I remember coming up here and, and I had a job interview when I first moved up here in 2007. It was absolutely the best interview I ever had. I mean, I thought, wow, and, and I'd worked for that company before. It's a lot of years down the line. And I thought, wow, it's, 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 it seemed like great. The lady seemed to like me so much. They had another, another uh, building that I could go to and work for them, the same company, but had another location. She said, I'll tell you what, let me call over there right now. I want you to interview over there today, too. I said, wow, man, I mean, shoot, that's great. So I had a job as soon as I got here. So then I went over and interviewed. Yeah, the lady just seemed to like me and everything, you know. And, and I said, we'll be in contact with you. It didn't happen. I called him back about two weeks later. Well, we get our, our home office in Miami has got to decide to hire you or not. And they kind of hem-hawed around. I said, I said, you know, I'm thinking to myself, I said, I got to, you know, I got to be working. I can't decide, wait till you guys decide. I mean, I want to work. That's why I'm here. So one day I was going up East 14th, and I was going to go up and see about working for this company. But just before, about a block before that, I felt the Lord tug on my heart, why don't you go in there and ask them? You know, I didn't even plan on that, didn't have no plans. I was just going up. Why don't you turn in there, Tim, and ask them if you can work for them? I went in there and asked them. You know what they said? We've been looking for a guy like you. We've been, how did, how did, I did not even, I'm just going up the road. The thing is, when you listen to what God says, he can open doors like that. Yeah. And, and my daughter called me and she said, why don't you see about working for DMAC? Mm -hmm. You know, you can train up there. We see the trucks. She went to DMAC main campus in, in Ankeny. Why don't you go about, see about working for them? I said, yeah, that, that sounds good. Went over there, had all my stuff that I had a van in, had all my stuff, went in. And, and, you know, I got my paperwork and everything, and, and, I, and, and they said, well, you know, we're looking to hire somebody in a couple of weeks. I moved up here in 2007 of February, and I started working at DMAC in March of 2007. How, who's who's going to do that? Who's going to do that? I've been there next year. It'll be 10 years. Who's going to do that? And I got full time in a year and a half. And I, already, I had two jobs there for a while, and I got full time. Who's going to do that? That's what God can do for you. You know, your attitude in Christ makes such a difference. That's what I love about Job. 
Yeah, Job had to learn a lot because he said, even if he slay me, yet will I trust in him. You know, and, and, and all the tests, I'm going to come forth as gold because Job finally had to learn that, you know what? We don't control anything down here. God does the control. And sometimes people don't like to give that up. They really don't like to give that control up. You know, they used to always say, you know, uh, make, make Jesus, uh, God, make God your co-pilot. They used to always say that. I remember bumper stickers, right? Okay. And I thought, make God my co-pilot. Why am I going to make him co-pilot? He needs to be the pilot. You know, <laughs> that's what he needs to be. I need to put him over in the first chair and I'll be over in the second chair. You know, because there's so many times I've seen in God and, and, and Tim, you know, it's like God's just saying, just believe me. I got your best interest in mind. I know exactly where you should be working. I know exactly where you need to be living. I know exactly who you need to be involved with. You know, God can save us from a lot of trouble. But you know what? We listen to ourselves. We listen to this in there. But, you know, one thing I talked to my sister and she says, you know, you know, I, I made some decisions. She, she's like our mom now. She's the oldest one in the family. She's like her mom. But she said, you know what? I wish I would have prayed before the fact than after the fact. And that's what we do so many times. If we would just ask God before the decision, then he wouldn't have to go clean it up afterwards. But a lot of times we don't. If we just pray, God, should I get this car or not get this car? He can tell you if it's going to be a lemon or not. He can tell you if it's not a good place. We went and got this Chevy Equinox. We're not, remember we went down there and what I was driving home one night. We had a Jeep Liberty and it wasn't that old. And I was driving home and you know I felt impressed. Tim, it's time to look for because it, it was out of warranty and you know and 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 the Lord just spoke to my heart. It's about time to get another vehicle. I said, Lord, this ain't very old, you know. But if Tim, it's time. Just trust me. I said, okay. That weekend I got a flyer from this company that's down. And it had this car on the front. And I looked it up and said, what? That seems like a pretty good, good looking car. And I looked it up and researched it. And we went down there. We had two cars. And we went down there. And you know what? We prayed. We prayed about it. And this young, he was a young guy. And he come out. And you know what? That kid knew everything about the car. And he, he was a good salesman. Then it came time, you know, at the end when they're putting figures and stuff around. And, you know, and we had two cars to trade in. And we prayed for, we went down there, that we need to get a certain amount for our one car, which is Ford Explorer. We need to get a certain amount for the Jeep we was trading in. We didn't have any money. We weren't going to put any money down because he's taking two vehicles. And then you know how they try to figure. And then the missus, she is so smart. God has just blessed me with somebody so wonderful. When they was trying to make it fine, well, you know what? Tell you what, we'll just go home and pray about it. That's good. We can walk away. We still got two cars, whether we, we leave here or not. Right. You know, we'll pray about it. So, no, just, just wait a minute. Wait, <laughs> wait a minute. So they went back and discussed it, and they came back and said, we got a deal. And you know what? No money down. Woo. Didn't cost us no money down. Okay? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Because they wanted us to put some money. Didn't cost us no money down, and we got a brand new vehicle. Who could do that but God? And we, one of the things we prayed, that the payments would be the same or lower than the vehicle we had before our Jeep. And you know what they were? They were lower than the Jeep. Who does that? Who does that, right? You know that, that that's all God. That's what I'm saying. If you let him guide your life, you know, that, that is so much. But it really comes back to the amount of control we want in our life. You know, because God can tell you, turn here. When I, all the years I drove the truck, that's what I learned to do is listen to him. I got to share this with you because sometimes I don't do what I'm supposed to, but through the years, now I do a lot better. Okay? One day I came through Des Moines. I was going out to Denison, and they had tornado watches for this area. So I'm running along 80 up there, and I mean, they're on the radio, these watches, are right? And it was supposed to come through the west side of Des Moines at 12 o'clock. So I'm driving through here, right? And the Lord, it was so clear. The Lord said, Tim, when you get, when 80 goes back west on the west side, there's a rest area. Pull in the rest area and park. I mean, it was so clear. <clears throat> so I'm driving, and I come around 80 and 35, right corner. And, I come, and I'm not kidding you. It just got so clear. 
I mean, it wasn't black or nothing except way off in the distance. So I make my curve there on 80, and I'm just thinking, I, I'm, I'm in, but I'm just thinking, wow, it's just perfectly still, you know? And I'm thinking, well, I don't know, Lord, maybe I didn't hear you, didn't hear you right, you know? So I see that rest area coming up, and I just drive right by. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, I, out of nowhere, all this wind comes up. I had to go off the next exit to keep from being blown over. You know what I learned from that? God, I ain't never questioned you again. <laughs> I learned from that. I learned from that. And sometimes you learn from your mistakes, but I don't call them a mistake if it's a learning period for you. If, it's, if you learn. Because you know what? Sometimes in life, God gives you do-overs. He does. And there's other times I had an opportunity that when I heard God, you know what I say now? Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. That's what I say. Yes, Lord. Because when you say that, you're being obedient. I always have felt that the sacrifice, when Jesus was in the garden, that's when the victory was won. I really believe that. You know, because it's always amazing. You think about the creator God, and he's getting ready to be sacrificed, and he asked the human being, John and Peter, would you pray with me? That is so powerful. Would you pray with me? Don't you realize all the sins of the world, past, present, future, everything's going to be dumped on me. Would you pray? And it, and it was a hard thing. I mean, I'm, I mean it, was, it was a wrestling. You could see the wrestling when he sweat great, great drops of blood and went back and Peter and him up there sleeping. When I need you the most, they're up there snoring there. Come on. Come on. Can't you pray an hour with me? But you know what he said? He said, nevertheless, not my will. He surrendered. He made that total surrender. And you know what? Jesus set the pattern for our life. That's what he wants. He wants that total surrender to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Whatever you want to do. Because, you know, obedience is greater than sacrifice. Being obedient. Once, once I learned that lesson, whatever God tells me to do, that's what I love the missus so much. Because she learned that lesson. You know, hey, Tim, I think we ought to do this. You know what I've learned to do? Learn to listen. Learn to listen. She always, just do what God asks you to do. I think God wants us to go over here or over here or do this. I found obedience is where you want to be. And it's tonight as we look at how Job handled things, when he fell down and he worshiped, when everything was taken away from him, he realized one thing. Everything he got came from God. And you look at the end of Job and how he got everything back. You know, he ended up getting 10 more kids. You know, he ended up getting double of what he, because he understood. He had to go through a lot of things and, and understand, you know, and his friends came and, and they started out, his friends started out good because they just sat with him. But they kind of messed up once they started opening his mouth, their mouth, because they, well, Job, you must have done something. You must have done this or that, you know. And you say, y'all don't get it. You understand. God's controlling this. You know, whatever happens down here, we might not know it. And I tell people when they go through hard things, heaven's the only place with all the answers. Because we may not ever get them down here. But one thing's for certain, God is still God no matter what. He is still God no matter what, good or bad or ugly. And that's one thing what God was telling me the other night. When, when, when something doesn't go well, you know what, Tim? I'm still God. If you don't feel blessed that day, it doesn't matter in one sense because I'm still God. So tonight, I just want to leave you with that. I want you to realize no matter what, God is still God. Amen. And never, ever forget that. Amen. Father God, we thank you tonight for this service. Yes, we thank you that you are so worthy. You are so dependable. You are so loving and so kind, full of compassion, ready to forgive. And Lord, you love all of us with an everlasting love. I ask you to put your arms around each and every one of us and never let us forget where we came from. Never let us forget the sacrifice you made and never let us forget what you have in store for us. You know, eyes 
haven't seen, ears haven't heard what you have in store for us. The ones that love God. And God, we love you tonight. Lord, and let us realize one thing, that we need to keep you big in our life. And we thank you tonight. We ask you to be with everyone that they can get home safely. And we praise you for the opportunity to come and worship you tonight. And we thank you in your wonderful holy name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Hallelujah.